Hello everyone. I am Tanya Mangla, a volunteer at Ado, and uh, I wholeheartedly welcome each one of you in today's webinar on the art of storytelling for persuasion and influencing by Mr. Wesley Chan. Ado about Ado. Ado is a global voluntary platform which aims to motivate youth to identify and undertake positive activities for a better society. We are a community network of university students and professionals who interact with students so that they grow up as successful professionals and responsible citizens. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker for the webinar, Mr. Wesley Chan. Uh, sir is a sales breakthrough coach and a keynote speaker. He is the first certified speaking professional accredited by Speakers Professional Singapore. He is a three times TEDx speaker and is a certified neuro linguistic programming trainer and a master coach. Sir has more than 10 years of experience in coaching, training, and speaking, and has coached more than 1,50,000 people across 21 countries. His esteemed partners include many prestigious names like Samsung, Dell, Astro Malaysia, Shell, Petronas, CIMB Bank, BG Telecommunications, Google Malaysia, and many more. Welcome, sir. And we request you to please enlighten us with your knowledge. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. So, everybody, good evening. And uh, before we start, so let's give yourselves a round of applause for coming here today. Right, thank you so much for making the time. And uh, so before we officially start our session here today, so and I would like to invite all of you here, if you could, to also turn on your video so that uh, we could have uh, interactions in between the sessions, right? Okay, so for us to begin this session here today, I would like to invite all of you here to raise your hands like this. Can I get to raise your hands like this? With both hands? All right, so now when I count one, two, three, so when I count one, two, three, I would like all of you here to just grab your feast, your hands like this. So when I count one, two, three, I would like all of you here to just grab your feast and your hands like this. Would that be okay? Okay, awesome. So ready? One, two, three. One more time, ready? One, two, three. Okay, so let's have a look at the way we arrange our thumb. Is your left thumb on your right thumb or your right thumb is on your left thumb or you're confused <laughs> okay so how many of you here if your left thumb is on your right thumb could i get you to comment the word left at the chat and if your right thumb is on your left thumb could i get you to comment the word right at the chat at the side so let's go ahead and do that so we have uh, Anzao's left and uh, Simran's left priyanka is left and uh, nikita is right and uh, Karu is left, Tanya is right, Stuti left, uh, Pratika is right, uh, Aman is right, Srivadhan is left, Anantika is left, Rishika is right. So let me tell you why we're doing this. It was because uh, it was many years ago and I still remember I attended a talk and the speaker once said that the way we arrange our thumb reflects our personality. And this is what it says. And if your left thumb is on your right thumb, so if you grab your hands like this, if your left thumb is on your right thumb, it is proven that in life, you are more emotional. And besides being emotional, it is also proven that in life, you are more romantic. Not too sure is it good news for you. <laughs> and if your right thumb is on your left thumb, it is proven that in life, that you are more logical. And in life, you will have a higher chance to be rich. So let me ask all of you here, friends from Adore, if you are given a choice, would you prefer to be romantic or would you prefer to be rich? I could hear you shouting the word rich. <laughs> okay, so everybody, we're gonna do this exercise one more time. So can I get all of you here to raise your hands again one more time? So right now, when I count one, two, three, I would like you to change, which means if this left at the top just now, now you change right, if it's right at the top just now, now you change left, which means I would like you to purposely change the way you arrange your thumb. Is that okay for you? Okay, awesome. So ready? When I count one, two, three, you change. So ready? One, two, three, change. 
question. How many of you here, after you have changed the way you arrange your thumb, you felt a little bit uncomfortable? It was a bit uneasy for you. It was not natural for you. So how many of you here, you felt a bit weird? If yes, could you please comment the word me at the chat at the side? Anza raised her hand and saw that, right? <laughs> if you felt so, Rishika, Siwadhan, right? Nikita, Emmanuel, Anika, Rima, Stuti, and all, right? Okay, so why would I want to start this exercise for the start of my talk? Is because I would like you to imagine this. If you change the way you arrange your thumb and you felt uncomfortable, what about when you change your life? Because change is sometimes uncomfortable, but I believe it is very necessary. And why do I want to begin with this? Is because at the end of the day, when we would like to persuade, communicate, when we would like to negotiate and influence people. Now, along the years when we are now in university, with young working adults, what happened is this. We are likely going to change the way we communicate. All right. So now change is very essential right so we can't just always end up talking to people like we want to talk right so we need to change the way we approach we need to change the way we persuade and to influence people now one of the things that i've learned in communication is this people don't remember everything you say but they will always remember how you make them feel at the end of the day people may not remember everything that you say but they will always remember what energy that you bring across is because at the end of the day, our first impression creates a lasting impression. So one of the best ways for us to leave a good impression in people is of course, to use the power of storytelling. So I would like to ask ladies and gentlemen and our friends watching this right now. Now, how many of you here, you love watching movies? You love stories. How many of you love that? Could you please comment the word yes at the chat? Right, awesome. Uh, yep, yes, Anza with an exclamation mark. Very excited of you. <laughs> All right, Pratika, Rishika, and um, Gagan with a yes, and Simran with triple exclamation marks. <laughs> so, if you ask me, storytelling is a topic that I'm very passionate about. It has helped me a lot in the way which I would like to communicate, influence, and to speak to people. Now, however, so there are some key challenges that people face when it comes to storytelling. So let's have a look at this. These are some of the common key opportunities that we could address. Number one, when we talk about presenting ourselves, when we talk about communicating, many people here, they may face the challenge of having too much facts and data in the way they present. And as a result, people will feel very fatigued. People will feel very tired. Number two, now we know that storytelling is powerful, but in a story, we need to have a clear structure. And the reason why the structure is important, if we do not have a structure, we could end up telling too long. Stories will be quite too boring and it will be not attractive. So at the end of the day, I would like to share with you some strategies, some structures and some skill set so that we can all tell powerful stories in your universities in your colleges, when you're delivering your presentations, when you're speaking to your superior, or even on a day-to-day -day communication. So therefore, these will be the few key things that we would like to address, and I think it's good before we start the session by just quickly introducing myself. Would that be okay for you? All right, awesome. So just a very quick one. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wesley, and um, that was the picture of me when I was thinner. <laughs> that was me two years ago and uh, this right now it's a uh, fatter version of me <laughs> okay so like uh, what tanya has done a very good job in introduction so i have been doing training for the past 10 years and i'm very grateful to be a three times tedx speaker and i've traveled across different cities in asia and i'm very privileged to have trained more than 150,000 people till date so these are just some of my experiences so prior to this, I used to fly a lot and I used to fly to different parts of Asia for me to deliver the talks and until COVID came. What I did was I just sit in front of my desk and I speak to people across the world, <laughs> right? So what happened is this is that, um, so if you ask me, storytelling doesn't always have to be face-to-face. -face. 
so long as you have a clear structure of storytelling you can storytell virtually you can storytell in day-to-day -day communication you can storytell when you're doing a presentation you can storytell when you're doing an assignment you can storytell when you're speaking to your superior as well so therefore the purpose of today is i would like to share with you the power of storytelling and if you ask me and say wesley why do we need stories we need story is because stories would help us to do the following now what happened is this on a day-to-day -day communication if you are just delivering your message to people now what could potentially happen will be as such so sometimes when we are telling a message to our friends to our parents to our professors to our lecturers to our peers what would happen is this they may have a critical faculty so what's called a critical faculty a critical faculty is part of our analytical brain because over the years there are marketing messages there are advertisements that ask you to buy things that you may not need over the years human beings have developed a defense mechanism against things that bombard against them this is what we call as a critical faculty which means sometimes when you tell message to your friends they may not trust you at the first glance don't get them wrong is because human beings would have a defense mechanism without trusting everything they hear at the very first glance. Therefore, if you can tell powerful stories, what could happen is this. You could use your stories to bypass the analytical brain. Let me give an example. When you tell your friend to work hard, and your friend may sound, everybody can tell me to work hard. But if you tell a story, of how Muhammad Gandhi, Jack Ma, Mark Zuckerberg, and all these powerful legends in the world, and you act with a very powerful moral, what your friends will feel. That's a very good story. But the message is the same. You are still telling the content of asking them to work hard, but you use it through a means of storytelling. Where you want to tell them an indirect message without sounding directly. So that will be the power of storytelling. And at this moment in time, just to make sure that everybody will be on the same page. Is this so far so good for you? Everything okay? All right, awesome. Thank you, Simran. Bit, um, okay, <laughs> right. And the rest of you here, a glimpse of an eye, 31 people right now. Okay, so without further ado, Wesley, so how do we tell stories? Right, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce the structure of storytelling, which I use throughout my presentations, and I'm going to give it as a gift to you. And with that, let me just move over to my screen and let me share with you the structure of storytelling. Now, for those of you who have ever watched Avengers, Batman, and all these different kinds of movies in the world, you may notice that all stories would follow the following structure. So let's have a look at this and allow me to walk through with you the structure of storytelling. So let's go into this key concept right now. All stories would have the following. All stories would have these three main components. Number one, what would happen before? Number two, what would happen during the middle of the story? They will bring a certain challenge. Number three, there will always be a certain challenge and then they will fight. And after all, we know who will win. The good guy will always lead, always win, and then happily ever after. So what happened is this, all stories would have before, challenge, and after, right? So literally all stories, <laughs> okay? So now that is a very quick skeleton of the story. So if I could introduce to you a structure of storytelling, so it goes by the three C's. So what I mean by the C's, three C's, and let's have a look at this. Before. And I call this as the context, challenge. The next C, after a challenge, you're likely going to have a certain action. And because of the action, there is likely to be consequence. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is this, all stories would have the before, the bad guy will come and they will fight. The good guy will win, 
happily ever after. <laughs> same goes to the fairy tale, same goes to the bedtime story, same goes to modern storytelling. It is all in such a way. Well, now, Wesley, it sounds simple, isn't it? But allow me to walk through an example with you. Now, would it be okay if I walk through my example and I will tell you a story using the following formula? Would that be okay for you? Okay, so let me present to you my story and I'm going to use before context, challenge action, and after consequence. So with that, let me go ahead and to walk through this example with you. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and to all friends watching this right now, I've spoken for the past 10 to 15 minutes. Now, I would like all of you to make a wild guess. Could you all guess what was my academic qualification? What did you think that I studied in my university many years ago? So can I get you to type at the chat at the side? Just make a wild guess. Based on the way I sound, based on the way I speak, can you guess what did I study in my university many years ago? So let's get you to type at the chat. Literature, Emmanuel. Ooh. <laughs> Psychology. Psychology, Bibita. Art and culture. Psychology, Swaraj. Okay. So let me reveal to you and the rest of you, you want to make a guess? Science? Uh huh. What about the rest of you? Commerce? Garima? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me reveal to you. And um, I was a chemical engineer. So that was a thinner version of me. Many years ago, when I graduated as a chemical engineer, I, I used to study in the oil and gas industry. So what happened to this? And when I was working back then, there was a picture of me when I was serving for a company called ExxonMobil. So what happened was when I was working as an engineer, I found my passion in training and speaking. I would wish that someday I could be a speaker to travel across the world. What happened is this, I decided to take a leap of faith to resign being an engineer and I would like to pursue my dream to be a speaker. Everything was fine, but until my dad found out. And I still remember it was one o'clock midnight and I came back home. My father was waiting for me in the living room. As I opened the door, he shouted, son, sit down. I'm like, why? And he asked me, can you tell me right now what happened to your job? Why did you resign as an engineer? And I told my dad, I wanted to be a speaker. I wanted to travel across the world to inspire people. He didn't like the idea. He was very angry and he was pissed off. He asked me one last time, son, you tell me one more time, engineer or speaker? And I said, speaker. He stood up, he banged on the table and he shouted at me and he said, son, get out from the house now. Sharp at 1.30 in the morning, I was chased out from my house. I was very confused. I was very lost. I still get to stay at home, but I never speak to my dad eye to eye for close to one year. I persisted. Thankfully, because of my mentors and coaches and friends, they supported me and I attended as many workshops as I could. I learned as much as I can. My breakthrough came when it was one day I was driving to a company, nine o'clock in the morning on a regular Wednesday, and my father called my phone for the very first time after one year. When I picked up the call, my father was crying. And I said, Dad, why are you crying? Son, as a father, I want to say this story. I felt that I was too harsh on you. From now onwards, whatever you do, I will always be proud of you. That's when I realized, ladies and gentlemen, tough times don't last. Tough people do. When you do your best and let God handle the rest. So that was the start of my journey. And uh, many people will ask me, and that's how I transitioned. So why I wanted to bring this example is because how did I tell my story? I started with my context of being a chemical engineer. I tell you my challenge that I wanted to pursue in being a speaker and a trainer. My dad was very angry and I said I persisted 
thankfully because of my friends. And after a year, my father apologized to me and he said, whatever you do, I will always be proud of you. So that is how I put the skeleton in my story before action consequence. Everybody okay so far? Can follow? Okay, so I'm going to review one by one. And you may ask me and say, Wesley, great. Okay, so Wesley, good structure, good storyline. But how do I add spice? And the reason why I put spice is because, I, of course, I know to where most of you are from. You're a big, you're a big fan of herbs and spices. <laughs> yes, Abiman, you, you. Uh. <laughs> okay, okay. So now, how do we add spice? Which means now that we have the structure, but how do we add flavor in your story? And allow me to walk through with you. There are a few things that you could do to paint a nicer story. So let's have a look at this, everybody. Now, I would like to introduce the next three S for you. Now, the first S in a story. is what we call a state. Now, state is not province. State is not district. What I'm saying, state is our emotion. Powerful stories will leave you at a cliffhanger. Powerful stories will make you cry. And I still remember watching a, a very famous Tamil movie uh, when I'm residing in Malaysia. And there's a very famous Tamil movie goes by the name of Muna. And a very famous Hindi movie go by Bairangi Bhaijan. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so what happened is these powerful stories create an emotion out of you. Right? So that's the first criteria. Then the second S that the story must have. A scene. Alright, let me just write the game. Scene. A setting. 1 o'clock midnight, 9 o'clock on a regular Wednesday, in front of my house, in my living room. So when I do this, what will happen to you? You will start to imagine. You will start to visualize. Ah, oh, right. So using scenes could do that. Now, the last third S that I would like you to have is what we call a seed. So what's the seed, everybody? Now, the seed is the moral of the story. What would you like to seed in the eyes of the participants? What would you like to seed in the eyes of the listeners? So which means you have your skeleton, you add the emotion, the thrill, you add the scene, where were you, what time, who do you speak to? And then you add the moral of the story. So ladies and gentlemen, allow me to tell my story again and you see how did I use the concept. I was a chemical engineer that graduated. I found my passion in, in to become a speaker. The challenge was I wanted to resign and my father was totally disagreeing. One o'clock midnight when I was in my living room, my dad shouted, son, sit down. One o'clock midnight, living room. And he was very angry and he asked me and I said, I want to be a speaker. And he said, son, get out from the house. Emotion. Suspense. And I said, I persisted and I took the action to keep going on. And a nine o'clock morning on a regular Wednesday, my dad called me and he said, son, as a father, I want to say sorry. And then I go with the moral. Whatever you do, I will always be proud of you. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. When you do your best, let God handle the rest. So that's how you craft your stories. All right, everybody, is it okay for you so far? Uh, if you are liking what you are seeing so far, if you're enjoying so far, can I get you to comment the word yes at the chat? If it's all good for you. Sivadan, is that how I pronounce your name? You have three S in your name. Sivadan Singh Sikaf. <laughs> Like a yes, 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 S, 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 right? Enjoying a lot, Simran. Appreciate that. Okay, so now some of you may ask me and say, Wesley, you know what? Good story, good structure. But the last thing that I'm afraid of, Wesley, when I stand in front of the class, when I'm delivering my presentation, when I'm delivering my proposal, my idea, the last thing that we want is somebody standing behind and shows you the clock. <laughs> hey, your story is too long. Do you have a shorter version? 
right? So what I'm going to show you in a moment is what if you want to tell stories in a shorter way. Now, what I've showed you just now, Tanya, this is a longer version of a story. But what if you want to tell shorter stories and I have this principle for you and this is what we call as a use of a metaphor. So, and I call this as V-A-S-E, a vase. So now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you watching right there, how many of you here, you have a vase at home? If you have, can you please comment the word yes? And if you don't have, go ahead and comment the word no at the chat at the side. Do you have a vase at home? Yes, Siva. Rishika, yes. Tuti, Tanya, Garima, awesome. Anantika, I don't have a vase at home. <laughs> All right, Kiran. All right, no, yeah, I've got friends who don't have as well. Nikita, thanks for saving. <laughs> um, Abai, no, Bibita, yes. Okay, so the purpose of a vase is to decorate your house. Decorate the classroom. Gives you the sense of liveliness and the sense of serenity in your living room. Very similarly in your presentation, we want to use this concept to decorate your presentation by introducing vase to you. Wesley, what do you mean? Right, so let's have a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. What I mean by vase will be the following key concept. You could use four of these techniques to decorate your presentations, beginning with point number one, a visual representation. Which means when you want to tell a story, when you want to deliver a presentation, use visuals. It could be picture. When I was an engineer, it could be a picture when I gave a talk. It could be a diagram that when you show people. Why do you want to use visual is because many people on earth, we are visual people, right? So what you could potentially do is when you tell your story and when you tell your presentations, you can use the golden triangle, the pentagon, the onion model, the square, if you could summarize and simplify your points using diagrams like this, your presentations will be a lot easier to be remembered, right? So an example of this, I show you the point when I draw a triangle. What you will likely remember is, yeah, I remember Wesley told me about a triangle, the context, the challenge, and the consequence. Now, if I were to just show you the point using slide, it will be quite boring, isn't it? When there are diagrams and charts, we remember better. Why is it so? We are just visual people. So that's the first concept. Number two, we remember better when there are acronyms. Do you know what acronyms? V, A, S, E. These are called acronyms. The three C's, the three S, these are what I call as acronyms. So why do we do that? It's because when we use acronyms, people can remember better. And of course, I would highly recommend you to use an acronym that will make sense. Please use things that will make sense. Don't just for the purpose of the presentation. The acronym is APPLE, A-P-P-L-E. Why? Don't know. <laughs> right? So use acronyms that will make sense so that people will remember, right? And the next one is called short story. Now I've got a good news for you. Wesley, this is a long story. Very good if you have time. But what if you don't have enough time? How do you tell a short story? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a big fan of this one concept called a Pixar Peach. So ladies and gentlemen, friends watching out there, how many of you here, you have ever watched a Pixar movie before? If you have, can you please comment the word me in the chat? Pixar movies, right? Incredibles, Monster Inc., Inside Out, Toy Story. These are all Pixar Peach. Pixar. Okay, if you've never heard of the stories that I've shared with you just now, which means you're either too young <laughs> or you're too old. <laughs> okay, so it's called Pixar Peach. Now, Pixar has got a very powerful way of telling a story. So we could actually tell stories using only six sentences. Beginning with the time, every day, one day, because of that, because of that, and until finally. Wesley, can you show me an example? Yes. 10 years ago, I graduated as a chemical engineer. Every day, I've always thought about being a speaker. One day, I resigned 
I, my dad was very unhappy. Because of that, I was chased out from my house. Because of that, I chose to learn on my own and I persisted until finally, my dad agreed and he said, son, whatever you do, I will always be proud of you. There you go, six sentences. You all seem quite confused, perplexed. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> right? So now you can also use this in business storytelling. So let's say some of you here, you're active volunteers, you know, you are going to tell people and you say, three years ago, we, we started with a doll. Every single day, we wanted to find like-minded people who believe in sustainability. One day, we decided we're going to create a youth movement. Because of that, we enrolled people from 30 countries around the world. Because of that, we grow the numbers from day to day until finally, we already have more than 30,000 people across the world in a doll. Welcome to a doll, for example, right? So you can use business storytelling like this. Or some of you here, you may join business challenge. Business competition, you're about to pitch an idea. You can say things like this. Many years ago, or you can even say once upon a time, five years ago, we noticed there is a challenge in Asia where every single day, many people are living in poverty. One day, we decided to help commercialize. We decided to help create a platform where even people below average can have the opportunity to earn side income through a marketplace. Because of that, we started this concept with a prototype. Because of that, we have now enlarged and get funded. And until finally, in our database, we have helped more than 5,000 people to increase their income using our platform. Something like that. So what you could do is you can tell stories in these following six key sentences. Time, every day, one day because of that, because of that, and until finally. Okay? All right, uh, Abe is like, there's like a confetti. <laughs> All right, so thank you. And the last one, everybody, is what we call an experience. Now, what's called experience, everybody? Experience is the use of an analogy. So what's analogy, Wesley? It sounds simple, but what do you mean by that, right? So what's an analogy? Let me tell you an experience of mine, right? Analogy means like this. So let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to type the word at the chat at the side. Has any one of you here heard of the word rapport before? If you have heard of it before, comment the word yes. If you have not heard of it before, could you please comment the word no at the chat at the side? Rapport. Yes, Nikita? Bivita? Emmanuel, you have a nice place with a very nice earphone and uh, you seem like you're in a plane. <laughs> a pilot. All right, so for those of you, uh, Sridhan, uh, Siwadan have never heard of this before. Now, there are two ways for me to tell you what rapport is. I will use the first way. Rapport is a sense of familiarity and connection when you speak to people. Now, I will tell you the second way. Rapport is when you travel overseas and you met someone who could speak your mother tongue. You go overseas and you realize people speak the language that you're very familiar with. How would you feel? <gasps> now that feeling is called rapport. Ah. So what did I do? I did not tell you the Oxford Cambridge definition. I told you an example when you travel overseas and you heard people speak your mother tongue and you feel like, ah. So that is what we call the use of an analogy where you, you don't go word by word for the definition, but you tell an experience. You tell an analogy. You tell something that people could relate. That is what we call an experience. So ladies and gentlemen, if you could always notice what I show you right now, V-A-S-E is an acronym. V-A-S-E is an experience, right? So there you go, everybody. So that's how I summarize it for you. And I hope that this will be digestible for you. And my last slide before we go to the Q&A is that if you ask me and say, Wesley, very good concept, but how can I put this into application? So. 
You could use stories when you're about to launch a brand, a campaign, a project, a proposal, and you can share how you come up with a concept. You can use a storytelling during the introduction. You can use storytelling to prove a concept has worked. For example, you can use storytelling that your prototype has helped X number of people before. You can use storytelling to show an idea, to bring a concept. You can use a storytelling to encompass a whole presentation. So there you go, everybody. So these are the examples of how we can use storytelling. Now, if you ask me, we all tell stories every single day. It is just whether do you tell it the right way or do you tell it a spontaneous way. All right. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my time is up because I'm given 40 minutes and I'll open the floor to any questions. And if there's any one of you have any questions and I'll be happy to address your questions. So if you have any questions, uh, do let me know um, at the chat at the side or you can unmute your mic. Very happy to meet you, sir. Thank you for enlightening us with your learnings. Thank you, Emmanuel. Likewise. Yep. So my question was like, usually people require a lot of confidence for short storytelling. So how mm -hmm. can we motivate ourselves to get that? All right. Very good. Very good question that you have, Emmanuel. Now, one of the most powerful stories to tell is the power of, is the story of yourself. Now, instead of telling stories of other people or other icons or other legends, start to use your very own experience to tell stories. Now, why do I recommend it, Emmanuel? It's because your own story is what you have been through. There's no right and there's no wrong. So you can start bringing your personal stories in the way that you present. Like in my case, I will always begin my sessions with telling a story about myself. So. At the end of the day, when you tell stories about yourself, uh, people find you more relatable, people find you more open, people find you more vulnerable. So how to boost your confidence? Tell your own stories and uh, begin with one, you do again, begin with two, and you keep doing again. Yep. So I, I first started by having awkward moments uh, and I changed and I learned over time as well. Yep. Hope that helps, Emmanuel. Yes, a very relatable. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, so I also have a question. First yes, of all, I would like to say that I think it's really amazing that you've been a TEDx speaker three times. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, how were you able to transition to that uh, phase? Uh, I mean, you know, being a TEDx speaker, I actually never thought that I would actually be in a webinar with someone who has worked with TED. It's such a great platform and I really, really admire the work they do. So, uh, can you just share your experience? How was it uh, being a TEDx speaker, not just once, but thrice? Uh, it was... Um, my first was hot, scary. <laughs> I was very nervous. Okay, so you asked a very good question, Anza. It's because um, before... Okay, my first TEDx was in the year 2015. My second was 2018. My third was 2019. Before 2015, I tell stories, but not as structured as I am now. So 2015, I, I started picking up structure of storytelling and it was scary because it's only 18 minutes with the countdown, with the audience and the spotlight. And it was, oh my God, it was scary. Um, but I learned one thing uh, because of my first TEDx experience and I, I really believe and emerge myself into the power of storytelling. So, and uh, number two and number three, then it was a lot better. And if you ask me, one of the best experiences being a TEDx speaker is that you really get to inspire people. You really get to tell stories and people would receive your story. And, and one of the best things is that it is recorded and you can use it for your own personal archive. You can share with people. And uh, to me, it's a very humbling experience being a TEDx speaker. Okay. Yeah, I think I could. will. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think I will definitely search for your speech on TEDx now. Sure. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much for hosting this session. It was really interesting, and I can see why you were a speaker on TED because you really have this 
just this way of explaining things it was really interesting to have you sir thank you anza my pleasure Uh, participants you can ask your question you can drop it in the chat box or you, you can even raise your hands and yeah you can unmute and ask very shy people we have here today <laughs> sir i also have a question go ahead tanya Sir, I think storytelling needs a lot of imagination. You just can't keep telling your story every time. Yeah. So, how can you imagine things in your mind? Like very spontaneous. You need to tell a different story every time. Hmm. You okay? Thanks for the question, Tanya. Uh, you don't have to always tell a different story. Like every single time when I do an introduction, I will use my personal story. And if you are speaking to the same crowd, then you find different stories. If you're not speaking to the same crowd, you can tell the same story. Now, you ask me the next question and say, how do we create imagination? Now, if you're gonna tell a story, Tanya, it can be personal, it can be, it can be a story of other people. One of the best ways to add imagination will be as follow. Now, I want to expand more towards the scene, right? So you must realize, right, when it comes to creating a scene, you would like people to join you in your imagination. And of course, you must first imagine yourself. So one of the best ways that I found out, one of the best ways to make people to imagine a scene or to first begin with ourselves, is to first elaborate. What will you see? Here. Meaning, now if I were to bring my example again, if I wanted to create a scene for you and me to visualize to enter that setting, what did I do? I introduced my father in the living room. My dad shouted, "Get out from the house now!" And I felt confused. So what did I do? When we elaborate what we can see here and feel in the story. We would go into the imagination, and we allow people to enter the imagination. Now, so if you ask me, why do I share you this one? Day-to-day -day examples could be turned into story. It could be even you, Tanya. At five thirty in the evening, I was very excited, and I was nervous because I was about to host Mr. Wesley Chan, and he came in, and he was all silent. And I'm glad that after the talk, it went well, and I learned one thing: panic is a sign of growth. Day-to-day <laughs> -day examples can be turned into a story, right? So, so yeah. Uh, so that's how we can increase our imagination in telling a story. Don't be afraid to tell the same story again. I have told my story for hundreds, and thousands of times, <laughs> and it can only go better. So don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. All good, Tanya. Awesome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you. All right. Sir, I also have one more question. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Uh, like when you are sharing your own experience, your own stories, most people don't really want, like they don't want to indulge themselves. So it becomes valueless for us. So how can we understand a good crowd for sharing our story? All right. Um, engagement is the key, Emmanuel. Where I think before you even tell a story, so the nature of the presenter, or the speaker, you must be engaging. So when I say engaging, means what? Now, before your story, you may want to ask questions. How did I start my story? How did I start my story? I started with, can you all guess what was my academic qualification? And I get you to type in the chat. And I also ask you questions to put at the chat at the side. So why do I do that? I want to first get people to be engaged in my talk. So that during my story, when I'm delivering, I will ask you questions and I get you to reply. Now, on a face-to-face -face setting, how you could do that? Get people to raise their hands, get people to give you a thumbs up, get people and ask them what do you think. Or if you don't want to ask people a yes or a no question, you can use a concept called rhetoric. So what's called a rhetoric question? A rhetoric question. Let me go ahead and type it aside. A rhetoric question is sorry, sorry, type 
full title. A rhetoric question in Reno is when you ask and you answer yourself. For example, I was, lo I was lost and confused. Can you imagine how I felt? So I ask and I answer myself without any response from the crowd. So when I ask questions like this, people go like, this is what it calls a rhetoric, right? So you engage them, get them to respond to you, get them to raise their hands, uh, use rhetoric. So these are the examples on how you can invite people in your story. Okay, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, if you don't have any questions coming up, I would like to ask a few questions to sir. Okay. Sir, sure. Sir, uh, so like you had a background, you had a different background, like chemical engineering, as you said. So how did you establish a career uh, in a field that was not related to the field of your graduation? And later on, what would you advise to a college student, maybe a young professional who is having a different career other than a speaker? And then what would you suggest how they can start from the scratch in the field of public speaking and storytelling? Sure. Thanks for the question, Garima. First and foremost, everybody, please complete your degree and your diploma. <laughs> please don't stop studying. Finish whatever you are doing right now, right? Uh, please don't quit studying because what I say is today. Now, how did I do that? So after I resigned being a chemical engineer and um, I first ventured myself as a motivational speaker. So I started small. I, I started small and I begin by going to schools to deliver motivational talks and to tell people to score in exam. I, I started delivering to young crowd. Why do I do that? Is because I wanted to find a place that is easy for me to start. Hence, I begin giving talks in schools, then to colleges and universities. Only then I move on to the corporate. So my point behind is this, start small. At least you do something start small right and over the years like what you asked me garima and i noticed that not everything that you study in university even though as a chemical engineer i did my degree but not everything i studied will be applicable as well so hence if you ask me having a paper or a degree is good but you must always understand that life is a lifelong journey right uh continue learning even though we are doctors degree holder, master's degree holder, but I think the, the attitude of learning is very important. And my advice to all of you here, you may want to be a speaker or not, I think it doesn't matter. So long as you believe in what you do, and so long as you put your heart and soul, your passion into believing in what you do, I think it's very important. I am very fortunate, Garima, that I found something that I'm very passionate at, and, um, and I persist. During the start, it was very tough, Always remember this one thing, tough times don't last and tough people do. So yeah, go and believe in what you do. Make sure that you put your heart and soul into it because we're all young people. I mean, you are young, I'm not as young as you. Um, when we are young, we have time. Take this opportunity to learn as many as we can. Go and seek out as much knowledge as you can. Go and attend as much workshops and talks as you can because we are young, we have time. So start early. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, do we have any more questions? Yes, Nikita, please. Hi, Nikita. Yes, I do. Can I tell you using a story? Okay. Are you ready? All set, sir. And the rest of you will be ready with your tissues? <laughs> no, joking, joking, joking. Okay, so now one story that has really touched my heart and I would say, uh, and, and I still remember this. So 
probably that was the downtime of me and it happened in year 2017. So the reason why I share this is because um, I lost my mother in the year 2017 in January. So what happened was in the year 2015, uh, it was during the Chinese New Year. And uh, 2015 Chinese New Year, my mom was cleaning the house. You know, like spring cleaning before the New Year, before Dipawali, before Thai, Thai Pusam. You know, we have a habit of cleaning our house, right? So it was Chinese New Year and she was cleaning the house and she felt chest pain. So we sent her to the doctor. The doctor realized there's a positive cancer marker. So we sent her to the hospital and uh, then she was diagnosed with lung cancer. And I still remember this very clearly, uh, Nikita. It was one fine day, it was an afternoon, it was two o'clock in the afternoon. It was in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. We were in one of the hospitals. So it was me and my sister, and uh, we were waiting for the medical report. And there was pin drop silence. When my mom's name was called, we enter into the room, and the doctor just, pe- just passed my mom the medical report. And as usual, these are all jargons that we couldn't understand. In short, she said, Auntie, I'm so sorry to tell you, you have stage 4 lung cancer. That was the time that I felt that in my life, I had a countdown. Because the doctor said, if there's no treatment, if there's no treatment that you're going to go through, your mom could only last for 6 months. I was crushed, I didn't know what to do and uh, we decided why not give it a try just to go for any treatment possible. Now the good thing is uh, she survived for the next two years. Everything was fine until December 2016. The reason I say so is because her cancer cells was controlled until December 2016 when the cells spread to the brain. When someone developed a brain cancer, they would start to forget things. She didn't remember where she put her phone. She couldn't remember what she ate. And the most painful part, there was one time, she was really quite bad in terms of her memory and I was feeding her during dinner. And she asked me, Who are you? Never in my life I would have experienced such pain before that your own mom questioned who are you. And I persisted and I carried on because it was my responsibility. 13 January 2017, 6.30 in the morning, she was gasping for air. (sighs) She couldn't breathe. We knew her time was to come. 7.30 in the morning, we did a prayer and she passed away. Just before she passed away, she was holding my hand. She let go and she gave me one last smile. The smile of a motherly love. And she passed away. I was very sad. But despite whatever we've been through in life, Nikita, there's always lesson to be learned. Even though I lost my mom, but I gained one of the most important lessons in life. And to me, it's called urgency. Urgency is when we value time. Urgency that we value people around us. Despite being one of the most sad moments in my life, I learned that when we have urgency, we start to take opportunity. We start to seize everything that we have and to make things happen in front of us. So Nikita, that was the most down part of my life at the moment in time. Thank you so much, sir. And I'm really sorry to hear that. And... uh... I am feeling really right now since all of us are really much connected to our moms. And thank you so much for sharing this. You're welcome. All right, sir. I have another question, sir. Go that ahead. Is, that is regarding the children, basically. Since at Adore, we generally, you know, deal with kids and children. Those are the inspiring minds. How do we actually motivate them through these stories? Because it's uh, as per I have found, it's quite hard to connect to the children sometimes. There are some children who are very resistant, who would not you know, participate much. So what can we do about that? There are children who participate a lot, who, who will gel up with you. But at a certain point, there are children who will not participate much, who are not much social. What yep. can you do about it? Right. 
So uh, that's a good question, Nikita. Mm. So now, if you are delivering to children, right? I think we may not have to use the styles that are delivered to you. You could tell stories of fairy tales, tiger, rabbit, tortoise, turtle, which is a lot more fun for children, right? And if you're gonna tell a story to a children, you have to be a lot more animated, right? Because children just like emotions, right? Don't they? So we have to be a lot more animated. We can use more visuals, use videos if you could. Tell fairy tales if you could. And I realized that for children, right, you need to increase the engagement with them. Meaning, uh, ask them questions, get them to say me, respond with them, play, acknowledge them, uh, get them to play around and um, shorten the duration of the story. So like for me, I, I can't tell this story to a child and she'll like, I, I, brother, I don't catch you, right? So the story should be shorter, simplified, increase the engagement, use more visuals, videos, and uh, increase the animation, uh, be more dramatic when you tell the story. And uh, that's how you could change your approach towards children. Thank you so much, sir. Totally understood. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you, Nikita. I think we do not have any more questions now. Sure. So if there's anyone who have questions and uh, you feel shy to just ask in front of everyone, <laughs> you could reach out to me. That's my LinkedIn. That's my Instagram and that's my email. So if you do have any questions, do let me know. And uh, when you were to ask me over the social media, please identify yourself that you met me in a door because I sometimes get random messages and say, hey, brother, have you eaten? I won't reply to random messages. <laughs> but if you say, hey, I met you in a door, ah, then I know at least I met you before. All right. So and I look forward to connecting with all of you. And uh, so before I take my leave and I want to take this opportunity to thank um, Tanya and uh, to the rest of you here, uh, Rishika, I think I met some of you here before, uh, Gimran, and for the rest of you here, thank you so much for having me. And it's indeed a great pleasure. So let's give ourselves a round of applause. And uh, back to you, Tanya. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. wrong side. Back. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay, thanks. Okay, on behalf of Adore and all the members present here, I would like to thank you, sir, for sharing your wisdom and this gift of storytelling. Yep. Uh, thank you for such an insightful and fruitful session with us. Uh, hopefully, we would have more such sessions in future. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you to all the participants for, part, uh, for coming with us. Thank you, sir. All right, bye. Sivadan, bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, Emmanuel, Simran, bye. Bye Priyanka. Thank you so much, bye Garima. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, sir. Rishika. Bye. bye. I remember you, Rishika. <laughs> bye Anza. Bye Simran. Bye Mukul bye, Gagan. Bye. Thank you again. Bye. Guys, don't fill the feedback you, form before leaving. Bye, Kaka. Thank you, sir. Participants, please fill the feedback forms that is given with chat box. Thank you.